welcome to Creekside Kids Science Lab. Today I'm going to show you guys something really cool. Watch what happens when we pour water into this jar of marbles. Have you seen anything like it? One minute, the jar was full of marbles. Next, they're vanished, they're just gone. But really, they're still there. It just looks like they vanished because the marbles are full of water themselves. This reminds me of how Jesus vanished from the grave. One minute he was there and then he was just gone. But unlike these marbles who are still here, Jesus is not in the grave. If you were to go to the tomb where Jesus was buried, you wouldn't see him there. That's because he's not there. He's alive. And Easter is how we celebrate how Jesus rose from the dead and is alive now. And if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, then you can have eternal life too. Today's experiment is a simple trick of science that reminds us of a true story so unbelievable, so amazing, so stupendous that it defies any explanation of science. Today you learned that if you pour water over jelly marbles, they appear to disappear. Now they don't really disappear. The jelly marbles were there the whole time, but the jelly marbles refract light the same way as the water around it. And that causes the jelly marbles to appear to vanish. Today we also celebrate a day 2000 years ago when some men and women went to a tomb to pay their respects for a man who had just died. And what did they find there? Vanished. The tomb was empty, but it didn't just appear to be empty the way the glass appeared to be empty. The tomb really was empty because Jesus, the man who had died, really had risen from the dead. You see, God loved the world so much that even though we were sinners, he sent Jesus who willingly died on the cross. He took the punishment for our sins and then he was buried in a tomb. Three days later, something incredible happened. The stone on the tomb had been rolled away by God's miraculous power, and Jesus had been risen from the dead. He was no longer dead, he was alive. It was a miracle because dead people stayed dead. That's science. But when science rules get broken by God's power, it's a miracle. Remember, the bowl full of jelly marbles appeared to be empty. That's science. But when Jesus' tomb was empty, that was a miracle. Now, most people didn't believe that it was possible for a dead man to rise again, to become alive again. But the Bible says that many people saw him after he arose. His disciples were amazed to see him alive. You heard in the Bible story today how it all went down. Maybe some were scared, some were shocked, some were unsure what to do with this information. How could he possibly be alive? But Jesus told them that this was the exact reason he had come to earth, not just to lead them, not just to love them, not just to become their king, but to die on a cross to take the punishment for our sins and to rise again. He defeated death, and that was why he came to earth. The whole story of the Bible has been building to this moment. You see, the Bible says we were all sinners. We've all done wrong things, things that hurt God and hurt other people too. And we are too imperfect, we are too sinful to save ourselves. So God sent his only son into the world as a human to save us. John 3:16 says it this way, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus died so that you could have forgiveness for your sins. Not only do we receive forgiveness, but we get to have a new life that begins right away. And that new life with Jesus will end with an eternal life, a life that lasts forever in heaven with God. This is the day that we celebrate Christ's resurrection when he rose again from the grave. If you've never prayed and asked Jesus for his forgiveness for your sins, this is a great day to do it. Because Jesus lives, we can have eternal life. In a moment, I'm going to pray and offer an opportunity for you to repeat after me to accept this gift of forgiveness. God loves you and he sent his son to die for you. 
Won't you accept his gift of forgiveness today? Let's pray. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your savior and you're ready to do that today, you can repeat after me. And if you're already following Jesus, you've already prayed a prayer like this, take this time to thank him again for dying for you and for rising from the dead and for giving you new life. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I accept your gift of forgiveness and I give my life back to you. Help me follow you all the days of my life. Amen. If you prayed this prayer today, there's a grown up in your life who would be really excited to hear about it. It might be your parent or it might be a leader at church, but make sure that you let somebody know because they're going to want to celebrate with you. And we're really excited that you're making this choice. But right now, Let's pause and pray. I'm going to put something up on the screen and challenge you to take a few moments to talk to Jesus. Take a moment to tell Jesus how thankful you are that he died for you. You can thank him for giving you a fresh start, helping you live God's way, the promise of living forever with him, or anything you can think of. memorize God's word together. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. Can you say that with me? Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Let's hide some words and see if we can remember them. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Ready to make it harder? Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Hmm, that's not hard enough. Let's hide some more. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Now it's getting tougher. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Let's hide some more. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Ready to make it harder? Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 All right, I think we almost have it. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 That's tough. Can you do it without me? Give it a try. 